The Supreme Court of the United States has ruled that the town of Greece, New York, can present clearly sectarian Christian invocations at its local government meetings. Now, if this seems to contradict the separation clause of the First Amendment, that's because it does. The opinions offered by the majority in the decision are absolutely terrible and based upon logical fallacies. One argument that was presented in favor of the decision was that since the Founding Fathers allowed prayer during government meetings, that shows that it was acceptable and it should be so today. The problem is that this is fallacious for two reasons. First, it is an argument from tradition. Making the case that something is acceptable simply because it has been done that way in the past is not logically sound. An easy comparison to make is the fact that many of the Founding Fathers owned slaves. Clearly, nobody would honestly argue that owning slaves is acceptable because the Founding Fathers did it. Secondly, it is an appeal to authority. It is suggesting that since popular historical figures approved of something, therefore it is acceptable. Another argument presented was that since the vast majority of citizens in Greece, New York, are Christians, and the only religious institutions in the town are Christian churches, then it is acceptable for the town to present only Christian prayers. This is very clearly an endorsement of tyranny of the majority, which the Founding Fathers explicitly wanted to avoid. This is why we aren't a true democracy, but rather a constitutionally limited, democratically elected representative republic. We entrust our elected officials to uphold the Constitution and the courts to keep them in check when they don't. In this case, the Supreme Court failed to uphold the Constitution in favor of letting the majority have their way. This is inappropriate because there are surely non-Christians who reside in this town. Just because they don't have a place to congregate within its borders does not mean that their rights and beliefs should be infringed upon to appease the majority. In fact, this case was argued on behalf of a Jewish woman and an atheist woman who reside in the town. The concurring opinion also stated that if anyone present at the town meetings disagrees with the prayers being recited, they are free to leave the room. This is not what our country was founded upon. This is the equivalent of conservative Christians telling non-Christians, our country is Christian. If you don't like it, leave. Nobody should have to leave the room in protest, especially if the meeting is well attended and seating is at a premium. A dissenter would have to give up their seat to do this. The opinion also stated that prayers couldn't be an attempt to, at converting anyone or be hostile towards other beliefs. However, that's not really the problem here. It isn't that we're concerned that the prayers are going to be converting people to Christianity. The concern is that it gives the appearance, which oftentimes is validated with behavior, that the government is favoring Christians over other citizens. The court ruled that the government officials cannot look down upon anyone if they decide to leave the room or disagree with their prayer, but they cannot be the thought police. There's no doubt that at least some of the officials will har harbor animosity towards non-Christians, and this may affect their treatment of such citizens with respect to the affairs of government. Lastly, the court's decision seems limited in scope only to the town of Greece, New York. Time will tell if other cities and towns decide to cite precedent in this case while installing sectarian prayers at their local meetings. What the court did was essentially punt the ball down the field by doing this. The court seems to be expressing no desire to be the arbiters of religious expression in local government and likely would refuse to hear subsequent challenges and cases should they arise. They claim that they don't want to be the ones to draw the line with respect to religious expression. However, no line needs to be drawn if religion is simply kept out of government entirely as it should be. Of course, it should be no surprise that this was a 5-4 to four decision handed down along strictly partisan lines. We have five conservative Republican Catholics ruling in favor of the town, opposed by three Jewish justices and one Democratic Catholic. Our current Supreme Court is a joke. They are not impartial and not unbiased when it comes to the subject of religion. They clearly ignored the Constitution in favor of their own personal beliefs. I highly doubt that the ruling would have had the same had this been anything other than Christianity being represented. Given this, I cannot wait until a town starts opening their meetings with non-Christian prayers. Perhaps a place like Dearborn, Michigan, 
could be re uh, begin reciting Islamic prayers. I would fully support this, and it would immediately bring out the hypocrisy of the Christians who supported this ruling. I would also encourage any residents of towns that begin offering only Christian prayers to do whatever necessary to make a mockery of it by using the open comment portion of the meeting to offer prayers to Satan or the flying spaghetti monster or even to their own deity if they believe in such a thing. Now this decision came on the heels of inflammatory comments made by the Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, Roy Moore. In a speech to a pro-life group, Moore made the following remarks. Buddha didn't create us. Muhammad didn't create us. It was the God of the Holy Scriptures in explaining that the First Amendment applies only to Christians. He also said, they didn't bring the Quran over on the pilgrim ship. Let's get real. Let's go back and learn our history. Well, apparently Moore does need to go back and learn his history because the pilgrims did not found the United States. In addition, they also left the church state of England so that they could practice their religion freely without the government interfering. Apparently, the irony of this is lost on Moore. Moving on to abortion, Moore stated that life begins when the baby kicks. This is known as the quickening. And that today the courts say that life begins when the head comes out. Now, while partial birth abortions are rarely utilized to save the life of a mother, the courts have clearly otherwise ruled that abortions are illegal past 24 weeks gestation. Now, these were just some of the highlights, or should I say lowlights, of his speech. This is the same man who was kicked off the bench by Alabama's Judicial Ethics Panel 10 years ago for refusing to obey a court order to remove a Ten Commandments monument from the Supreme Court building in Alabama. Unfortunately, Alabama elects their judges, and the people there decided that Mr. Moore would make a great Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. This is also the same man who recently authored opinion that stated that an unborn child has an inalienable right to life. Now granted, I do agree with his decision in that case because it centered around a woman who did cocaine while pregnant with a child that she eventually gave birth to. To me, that is still abuse. However, there is little doubt in my mind that conservatives will try to use this ruling in the future to curtail abortion rights. The point that I want to drive home here is that we cannot sit back and think that our Constitution will be upheld properly. We have to be active. We have to make our voices heard. We have to vote. If we continue to allow these religious fundamentalists to control our legislatures, and especially our courts, we are going to be in for a struggle. Conservative fundamentalists know how to game the system. So they are stacking the courts with their judges who have the power to interpret the law according to their own biases. And the only recourse would be to amend the Constitution, which is very unlikely. We must protect the secular nature of our government. I only hope that the decision in the Supreme Court case regarding Greece, New York, is not a harbinger of things to come with the Hobby Lobby case. You can safely assume that we'll have the same partisan lines in that case. Our only hope is that Justice Kennedy does the right thing and rules against Hobby Lobby. I am Prototype Atheist. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with anyone else you think would be interested, and subscribe to my channel for future updates. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash prototypeatheist and on Twitter at protoatheist.